Before we can listen to the reflection prepared by Father Zach, let us say a small prayer and listen also to the Word of God. Let us pray. O Lord, God of our fathers, who bestowed on saints Joachim and Anne this grace that of them should be born the mother of your incarnate Son, grant through the prayers of both that we may attain the salvation you have promised to your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen to a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. A reading from the Gospel of Saint Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again, about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I chose, what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Before we proceed to listen to the reflection that has been prepared by Father Zach, let us go to the source of this recollection, which all began with the Holy Father, Pope Francis, declaring the fourth Sunday of the month of July as the day dedicated to the grandparents. And when he did this, he also decreed a letter. Let us listen to what Pope Francis has to say before we make a reflection on the elderly and on St. Joachim and Anna. Dear elderly friends, I am with you always. This is the promise the Lord made to his disciples before he ascended into heaven. They are the words that he repeats to you today. Dear grandfathers and grandmothers, Dear elderly friends, I am well aware that this message comes to you at a difficult time. The pandemic swept down on us like an unexpected and furious storm. It has been a time of trial for everyone. 
but especially for us elderly persons. Many of us fell ill, others died or experienced the death of spouses or loved ones, while others found themselves isolated and alone for long periods. The Lord is aware of all that we have been through in this time. He is close to those who felt isolated and alone, feelings that become more accurate during the pandemic. Tradition has it that Saint Joachim, the father of Jesus, felt estranged from those around him because he had no children. His life, like that of his wife Anne, was considered useless. So the Lord sent an angel to console them. While he mused sadly outside the city gates, a messenger from the Lord appeared to him and said, Joachim, Joachim, the Lord has heard your insistent prayer. The artist Giotto, in one of his celebrated frescoes, seems to set the scene at night one of those many sleepless nights filled with memories, worries and longings to which many of us have come to be accustomed. Even at the darkest moments, as in these months of pandemic, the Lord continues to send angels to console our loneliness and to remind us, I am with you always. He says this to you, he says it to me. That is the meaning of this day, which I wanted to celebrate for the first time in this particular year, as a long period of isolation ends and social life slowly resumes. May every grandfather every grandmother, every older person, especially those among us who are most alone, receive the visit of an angel. This is a text from Pope Francis, written on the 31st of January, 2021. Greetings to all. My name is Father Zacharias Matam. I am a Salvation Priest, Rector of Redondoris Mother College and Professor of Scripture in Christian World College. Most Reverend Derek Fernandez, Bishop of Belgaum, asked me to give a talk on Saints Joachim and Anne, whose feast we celebrate on 26th July and who are the grandparents of Jesus Christ. He wanted me also to speak about the place of the grandparents in our lives. Imagine the great privilege of this holy couple, Joachim and Anne. They shared in the privilege of St. Joseph and Mary, who were highly privileged, most highly privileged. Imagine the, the privilege of St. Joseph was called to be the foster father of Jesus Christ and to take the place of the heavenly father on earth for Jesus. Jesus would call him Abba Father. The same name he used to address the heavenly father. The honor that was given to Saint Joseph. And the privilege that was given to Mary is ineffable. She was called to be the mother of the eternal Son of God. She conceived him in her womb and carried him with great love for nine months in her womb and brought him forth in Bethlehem to this world. He is the eternal Son of God who feeds the birds of the air and he is put to us human beings and animals who cares for us. But Mary will feed him at her breast. He is the eternal word of the Father. But Mary will teach him to talk. He guides the movement of the sun and the stars and the planets 
but Mary will teach him to walk. He is the eternal son of the father, the creator of the world, who girds the whole nature with an investor of beauty, but Mary will clothe him in swaddling clothes. Joachim and Anne share in this privilege. They were grandparents of Jesus because they were the parents of Mary and so in reality the grandparents of the Son of God. In every family, the grandparents have a very important place in the life of the grandchildren. And this is, was true also surely of Jesus. How many times Mary and Joseph must have left Jesus with jo Saints Joachim and Anne to be cared for, to be looked after when Mary went to the market or, or when uh, she had to go to bring water. The, the, the grandparents were there always to help her. So the privilege that they had to have the Son of God with them. As children, we spend our holidays with the grandparents. Surely Jesus also must have done this. Imagine the privilege they had to have the Son of God living in, with them in their house. Now he, Jesus said, the Father and I am one. He who sees me sees the Father. What I speak, I do not speak of myself. The Father is, is speaking through me. What I do, the Father is doing through me. So Father and Son are one. So where the Son is, there also is the Father. And where the Father and Son are, is also the Holy Spirit. So the eternal trinity was with them in their house. Uh, and where the trinity is also the heavenly, heavenly was invisibly present. So their home became the heaven on earth. Temporarily, the privilege they had to be so close to the Son of God, um, men's, they indeed was their privilege. Unfortunately, the scriptures, the gospels do not give their names or any information about them. But tradition from the second century onwards say that name of the mother of Mary was Ohanna in uh, Hebrew meaning grace and Joachim means Yahweh prepares. Tradition says that originally they were from Galilee and they came to Jerusalem to settle down there and after death, after their death, St. Helena built a church on the other, on the other spot of their house. Tradition also says that for a long time Anne was barren. She had no children and after, after insistent prayer and, and penance and sacrifice, Mary was born. So, the, the privilege that this holy couple had. From the fruit, the tree can be known. So, Joachim and Anne had as their daughter, the Immaculate Mother of God. And as their uh, grandson, the Eternal Son of God. And imagine the, the, the joy, the communion and the love that reigned in their family. Surely, and Anne and Joachim lived such holy lives that their family was like the family of Nazareth, a kind of holy heaven on earth. I want to read to you what St. John Damascene says about them. He says like this, O oh, blessed couple, Joachim and Anne, all creation is in your debt, for through you it presented the noblest of gifts to the Creator, namely a spotless mother who alone was worthy of the Creator. Be glad, Anne, O barren who do not bear. Break forth into shout, you who are not in travail. Rejoice, Joachim, because from your daughter to us a child is born, to us a child is given. And his name will be Wonderful Counselor, the salvation of the whole world, Angel, Mighty God. The child is God, O blessed couple, certainly the most free from sin, Joachim and I. From the fruit of your bodies, you are known. Just as the Lord somewhere said, by their fruits, you shall be known. By your pure and holy way of life, you brought up the jewel of virginity. She, who after giving birth, was ever a virgin. While you led 
a, be a be beautiful and holy life in this world. He produced a daughter greater than the angels. Make a joyful sound to the Lord all the earth. Break forth in the joyous song and sing praises. Raise up your voice. Raise it up. Do not be afraid. St. John Damascene. Well, already from the second century, devotion to St. Anne and Joachim began to be, to be held in the church. In the Eastern Church, they began to honor St. Anne already in the fourth century and in the Western Church in the eighth century. Already the Eastern Church began to celebrate their feast after the eighth century and in the West after the 14th century, the feast of, of um, St. Jo jo Joachim and Anne was uh, um, instituted. It was in 1548 that it was promulgated to the whole universal church, brothers and sisters. So this great couple is for us um, an example of holiness. So uh, let us reflect a little bit on the place and the relationship of um, um, of a uh, of our grandparents with us, the place of the grandparents in our life and our relationship with them. The fourth commandment says, honor your father and mother. The honor shown to the parents should also be shown to the grandparents because they are the parents of our own fathers and mothers. And they also have a very important place in our lives. So they should be honored parents and grandparents. Honor means that they are given the, the important place, the primary place, the principal place at table and uh, in the family reunion or meetings that they are given the, the leading role in, in the family prayer that their um, opinion is sought for on important matters that they are given a very important place in the life of the family. St. Paul in the letter to the Colossians says, Children, be obedient to your parents in everything. That is what pleases the Lord. The fourth commandment, which shall honor your father and mother, is a commandment that is, uh, to which is attached a promise, so that you may be well on earth and have a long life. So those who honor their, their grandparents and parents, they will have a um, long life and they will experience well-being on earth, blessing of God in every way on earth. So very important this is feast. Um, the book of Ecclesiastes says, the Lord honors the parents in their children and uh, the Lord supports the right of a mother over her sons. Respect shown to the father will be, will be a source of atonement for sins. And uh, honor given to the mother is like one amassing a treasure. And it goes on to say, in your life, do not forget your parents and grandparents. Support them in their old age. If they lose their mind also, be patient with them. In your strength and health, show them kindness and love. Kindness shown to the, uh, the grandparents will be a source of blessing for us. Whatever is done to them, it's as though done to Jesus Christ himself. So their presence in the family is like the presence of Jesus Christ himself, brothers. So very important is our relationship with our parents and grandparents. We also are called to holiness like them, like Mary and Joseph, like Joachim and Anne. But God has done something equally marvelous in our life. From the cross, Jesus Christ gave Mary to us as our mother. Because we have within us not only uh, we have not only the physical life, we have also the spiritual life, life of God in us. This life of God, the life of Christ in us, we receive through Mary. So Mary is truly our mother. So if Mary is our mother, then also Joachim and Anne are also our grandparents spiritually. And very, very important is what Jesus Christ has done in our life. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. So those who believe in him may not be lost, but have eternal life. Eternal life. Jesus Christ giving us the Holy Spirit 
enables us to call God Abba Father. We are born from the Heavenly Father and have within us the life of God. Christ has united us to himself as his own body. We are members of the body of Christ, members of one another. Although we have different earthly fathers, we have only one Heavenly Father. All of us have one Heavenly Father. So all of us are brothers and sisters. So we should live in this world loving one another and becoming one in heart and soul. What is important is that God is calling us all to holiness. St. Paul said, from before the foundation of the world, he shows us to be holy and spotless and live through love in his presence, determining that we should be his children. Already we are children of God now, in truth. St. John says, see what manner of life, of love, the fathers showered on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. It does not appear what we shall be, but when he comes, when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as his. We shall be like him and see him as his. What God has planned, planned for us, that we shall become one with God. We are sharing the life of the Trinity. St. Paul says in the letter to the Philippians, our homeland is in heaven. From there we await a savior who will come. And when he comes, he will transform, will transfigure wretched bodies and make them glorious like his own body. Uh, we will be transfigured, we will become glorious. So very important to live holy lives in our lives that we love one another, love our brothers and sisters, our parents, our godparents, and fulfill the will of God in our life. In the, let, in the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 7, St. Paul says, Be always joyful. Pray, uh, continuously give thanks for everything this is, this is the summary of your Christian life be always joyful because God loves you you have a father in heaven who cares for you and provides for you you are his son we are his sons and daughters and he, he is with us we have Jesus Christ with us not only externally present as he was present in the family of Nazareth in the lives of, of Saint Joachim and he comes living us Jesus Christ says, remain in me as I remain in you. Jesus Christ said, you one. Already now, we, we are one with Christ. He eats my flesh and drinks my blood, lives in me and I in you. I am the wine, you are the branches. So we are united with Christ like the branches to the wine, the same lives have eternal life, the Holy Spirit we share, brothers and sisters. So this feast of, of St. Joachim and Anne must help us to deepen our Love for our family, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our parents and grandparents, and really love and serve them. May the Lord enable us to do this. Amen. Thank you.